Hey everyone, we're talking a little bit more about how we create custom templates in Heidi and I, I really do enjoy this area because it's giving us the information that we need in the way that we want, as concise as we want it as well. So let's jump straight in. What we're seeing here is sort of my templates. Um, as we go to the Heidi screen, we jump along, there's templates down here in the bottom left. It's going to pull up what we're looking for. Now, if you've already got some templates that you've made, you'd know that you go to actions, these three dots, and you can go straight into edit. <clears throat> for those of us that don't already have um, you know, a template made, let's start looking at that. We come up to the top right and we press create template. Once we're in there, we get to choose sort of what we're wanting to do, whether we're pulling across a um, previous note and having Heidi sort of design a template out of that, or whether you're going to go straight from scratch and say, okay, well, let's see what we look at. Either way, you're going to end up with, you know, what I recommend is a little bit of a hybrid of the two. So put your notes in, but then also have a bit of a look. If you want to start with the custom templates that I've got, you'll see those in a separate folder as well. And um, we've plenty of those different ones for a few of our different templates, you know, from podiatric surgeon, nail and skin, um, post-procedural templates, my referrer and GP letter, um, my initial podiatric assessment, which, you know, it's probably a really good one for all podiatrists for that initial assessment. Um, and, you know, a few of the other ones which come standard with Heidi as well. Now, what I'm going to do is really show you and uh, introduce you to some of the phrasing of what we do. And I'm going to go through um, my podiatric surgical template that I use for most of my reviews now. I apologise for how wordy this is, and I'm just going to go through some of the main key points here. But really, the, the wording here is for the AI. Remember, we're not needing it to make sense, we're just wanting it to be able to provide the detail and the structure that we're looking at. You can see that I like to sort of dot point under my heading of subjective, but more importantly, this mention if available is, is really there. And you know, we wanna make sure that we're getting all of the in-depth information, particularly this detailed history of the presenting complaint. I really like this type of setup because initially it's going to come up patient attended with an ingrown toenail um, that's been painful for you know four weeks or whatever it might be. And then it goes into the detailed history of what they've tried, the onset, duration, the severity, those aggravating factors. And then we've got another few lines which might be talking about sort of that social history, how it's impacting their sports, their physical activities. Um, but it's also removed if it's not talked about, which is really important so we don't necessarily need to go back and completely remove everything that we're looking at or that would otherwise be there. Now, as we get into the objective side of things, you know, we're starting to talk about these physical exam findings. Now, as I said in one of my previous sessions, I, I talk to Heidi, I say, okay, on observation, this is what I'm seeing. These are the neurovascular examinations. My range of motion is limited through the first MTP to roughly 45 degrees. I do have, uh, you know, hallux valgus deformity of the left and hamatoe deformity that is reducible to the right, second and third toes. You know, there's swelling or tenderness or there's discoloration. And again, we've got this mention if available here. Um, you know, mention if applicable and if available. And these are the sort of prompts that Heidi's actually provided to us um, through some of the templates previously so that we know what we're looking at. You know, the vitals, mention if available, the investigations with results. You know, um, you know, that's what I'm wanting there. And I, I had a few different things, if available and if they're previously undertaken and discussed. Because sometimes if they're not, um, you know, uh, commonly initially, I was getting that I'd referred them for imaging in the objective. And I'm like, no, no, that's part of my plan. And so you need to be maybe more precise when it comes to sort of what we're looking at. So we don't necessarily need to copy and paste every time we do this same template. Now the assessment and plan, this is where it gets, um, this is my favorite bit, because you know, as much as it's important to have a strong history and our observations right, we really wanna make sure that we've got that plan solid and we know what we're thinking, and it really will reflect that the patient is aware. And if we are working in a clinic with multiple practitioners or in the public system, um, where there could be a completely different uh, you know, um, practitioner uh, consulting, it, it's really important to get this right. And so I have a broad plan that, you know, impression as such um, and you know make sure it's applicable if it's available um, and providing that sort of you know in a, in a brief sense there 
um, I'll then go straight into this mouthful. And I apologise it's a little bit smaller, but this is sort of the paragraph that we've got there. Um, I'll go through this in a little bit more depth because really it, it, it does come up with the one. It's stating that podiatric issue or condition that's, uh, that's happening there. It's going through sort of any likely diagnosis and the rationale, um, and this is the important part, the rationale based on that subjective and the objective findings. Again, mention if available. It's talking about any of the differential diagnoses that I've talked about. Um, it's, and sometimes Heidi will give you some of these diagnoses as well. And again, you might need to sort of guide it in the right direction or edit, edit for accuracy, um, but it will make sure that you're keeping uh, as much as possible an open mind to this as far as uh, the machine learning looks at. Go through any investigations planned or further imaging. Um, you know, it'll start talking about those non-surgical or conservative treatment um, options that we're talking about. And it will flesh out those on a different line typically I find. It'll also talk about any repetitions or sets that you're doing for exercises. It'll talk about um, sort of the, your treatment regimes I suppose in more depth or as much depth as what you have provided. Particularly if it's like this type of a, a, a um, template that is asking for as much information as possible. Um, we'll also go into any surgical treatment that you might have suggested as an option, um, which is really important. And you know, and for myself, any pre-operative um, preparation um, and you know, anything that they might need to do there with regards to lifestyle or pre-medications um, and you know, what their post-operative care plan and recovery might look at. Um, with that, it's also going to be you know, any appropriate referrals. For myself, I, I do a pre-anesthetic uh, assessment and so that's what we might be doing or might be seeing as part of that. Um, and again, for each of these, you're really seeing if needed, mentioned, um, uh, you know, mention if applicable and available. Uh, so if there's not information on this, then you're not likely going to see it in your template, although sometimes you do. Now, if there's more than uh, one concern, and I know I had a patient yesterday that you know, had hamatose, bunions, heel pain, and Achilles tendinopathy, and it sort of grouped them nicely, bunions and hamatose into the one, um, you know, the plantar fasciitis, plantar fasciopathy into one, and the Achilles into another one, and it basically went through that format for each. And it really meant that it just allowed everything to flow really nicely. I knew what we were doing for each one and I'd verbalized really well in the console, which means the patient was able to interpret and understand that well. But it also means that we're getting those really good notes through Heidi too. Now the next part there is that, you know, we do want any additional notes, um, any instructions, um, which is a really good way that we're getting that there. Now, for me, the care plan rationale is a really important thing that I've added more recently. And basically, I, I want a dot pointed reasoning to proceed with the current care plan um, as I've described it and justify that. Basically, this brings everything that we've done prior and basically I get something about you know half the size of this, it's one or two sentences basically saying there's an ingrown toenail that's mild, the patient has advised that they would like to proceed with conservative knowing the risks, um, the recovery, and knowing that there is a procedure available but they're not wishing to undertake that at this stage. Or there is a surgery available and they would like to do that irrespective of the conservative. Now I find that this type of a option is that final paragraph really ties everything together and it means in our head and definitely in the patient's notes that we've got that nice and concise. Now when we talk about the templates and with the Heidi AI, we can actually then um, you know, have this as our note and you know, once it's filled out we get something great like in that previous um, session and basically we can say okay provide a summary of the consult for our patient and it will basically give them their diagnosis, their care plan um, as it is basically based on our notes and in a very nice concise manner which you can then print out and give to that patient as just a, a very simple word doc. Now that's a very nice thing to have for our patients because it provides all the information that we uh, have ourselves, gives that to the patient so that they can actually be um, have that written resource of, okay, what did we talk about? Why are we doing it? Um, how often do I need to do my exercise? What exercise? What are my options? For me in clinic, I actually have another um, a simpler sort of management template that I use, um, but that's a story for another time, definitely. But you know, all templates can be different. I've shown you one type of template and I've given you a few different feedback um, options as far as how I template those, but there can be so many different ones and I really encourage you to start 
you know, trialing a few different ones. Now I'll put some of my more common ones up just so that you've got something to start with. They don't always work for everything that you're wanting to do and I do edit a little bit, but I'm getting better and better. Again, Heidi's getting better and better. And so this is where we can start to work, um, you know, with the software engineers and having a bit of a chat with the team at Heidi, with our colleagues and starting to share some of these resources. So if you think your template's better, I wanna know about it. Let's update all of them and you'll be able to find them online as well. But for the meantime, this has been using Heidi and Clinic with regards to some of our templates. Um, and I think, you know, customizing those templates is just such an important aspect. Cheers.